Hey CCPA, this is Stephanie Salerno, Assistant Director of Outreach and Engagement from the Office of Enrollment and Student Services, and this is my Center for Arts Leadership How Did I Get Here video. What started off as a love of romanticism and opera in musicology has developed into an expertise in the Canadian-American singer-songwriter Rufus Wainwright. It makes a lot of sense to wonder how exactly I got from Tchaikovsky and Chopin to here, where I study the intersection of popular culture, identity politics, and performance studies while working in enrollment in student services. I started my formal academic training at CCPA in music history with a minor in piano performance. During this era of my life, I was a piano teacher, accompanist, church pianist, sales associate, and receptionist. Four years after I finished my bachelor's, I did a master's in liberal studies from North Central College and then went right into a doctoral program in American culture studies at Bowling Green State University. Moving to Bowling Green, Ohio marked the first time in 11 years I had no gigs, no students, and no part-time officer retail work. I pursued a doctorate because I always felt like I had something important and original to say, but lacked the confidence and training to communicate it. Academic training helps develop one's voice, and for me, it provided the structure and mentorship I needed to grow as a writer, and the resources required to do the work I felt was interesting, important, and personally fulfilling. But when I was trying to make decisions about my future, it didn't seem that clear-cut. About a year into my master's program, I stumbled across Rufus Wainwright's music and became utterly enthralled with it. I drew a lot of momentum and inspiration from his music in the fan community and realized that what I was after was a means of combining my musical training with cultural history. I had a skill set that was well suited to writing and research. I work well independently, am self-motivated, have strong self-discipline, thank you years of piano lessons and conservatory training. And as I researched Wainwright, I realized I had an original, largely untapped research subject and topic but I had to make a choice. Did I uproot myself and essentially start over? Or stay put and continue to feel stuck and underutilized? In the end, I applied to four programs in American Studies or Culture Studies with scholars on faculty who could advise a dissertation on Wainwright that asks questions about the relationship between art and grief. My dissertation focused on Wainwright's 2010 album, All Days Are Night, Songs for Lulu, which is a classically inspired song cycle written while his mother was battling cancer. My work studies the album, piano and vocal score, lyrics, and live performances of the tour that were on YouTube, and argues that through acts of public grieving, Wainwright, a cisgendered gay male, modeled emotional vulnerability in a society and culture that largely discourages male bodies from expressing public emotion. And through this outward expression, audiences were able to vicariously work through their own experiences with loss and grief. But how was I supposed to translate that into a job? When I went on the job market in 2015, I focused on location rather than field. I'm a Chicago suburb native and knew I wanted to return here and settle, so I didn't focus only on tenure track teaching jobs because I wasn't willing to go anywhere for the job. I have a skill set that I think makes me a strong administrator, and higher ed needs strong administrators. So, applying for jobs meant that I had to find a way to sell my previous professional experiences in music and administrative work with the skills developed across four years of teaching and researching at BGSU. The soft skills and practical experience that I developed as a musician, scholar, teacher, and an office admin armed me with what I needed to succeed in my current role. But I had to sell those skills as such, which is a really difficult task. So when I needed help in 2015, I sought out the Career Center at BGSU and sought some advice as to how to translate all of these skills into something marketable. Whether you're looking to go on the job market in six weeks or six months, I recommend that you take advantage of the resource at Roosevelt. It is always a great idea.
Right now, I work in an office at CCPA where certain times of the year we work nearly nonstop and have erratic schedules, and it makes it really hard to be healthy and positive and motivated. Often at the same time, I'm working on research that focuses on pain and grief, sometimes my own, sometimes others, all of it's draining. So self-care is a critical piece of success because without it, you burn out whether you're a teacher, an artist, a scholar, or any combination of the three. For me, self-care is often about solitude. Walking, reading, watching TV, listening to music, writing fiction, anything to remind myself that the things I do that are considered work came from past times and art forms I enjoy the most. As we move through this unusual spring and into an uncertain summer, I want to offer a playlist of my favorite Rufus Wainwright songs that will accompany this video. I hope you enjoy this peek inside of Wainwright's catalog. It's also a pretty good indication of what has influenced and occupied my own thoughts for the better part of 10 years. As I wrap this up, I want you to remember two things. One, you know yourself best. So always trust your instincts and embrace who you are. Don't allow others to make you feel like you have to apologize for your lived experience. This is a lesson I have to continually teach myself. Two, your voice is the most powerful tool you have. Whether it's your words, your pen, your instrument, your body, how you express yourself is both your weapon and your armor. Use it well and take care.